This morning, I hope you are ready for the Word of God and we are going to dive straight into uh, the Word. And, you know, as a church, we've been talking about relate, okay? We're talking about uh, for this pa- past one quarter, we we emphasizing on relate. And this is coming a branch off from our overall team for these two years, which is new season and new opportunities. New season and new opportunities. And in every season, in every new opportunity that God brings us to, uh, we want to relate to Him better. We want to relate to others better. And of course, we want to relate to ourselves in a healthier way too. And so this morning, we want to look to His Word. If you have your Bibles with you, would you go with me to the book of Acts chapter 16. Okay, Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts was written by Dr. Luke and Acts records for us that counts the work of the disciples and the beginning of the early church. And uh, in the book of Acts also writes down uh, Paul's missionary work as well. And that's where we want to look at this morning. And uh, the passage we're going to read, we will find Paul and Silas, who was with him, they are thrown into prison because of what they what they have did. And this is where we want to pick it up. Okay, so Acts chapter 16, verse 25, and I'm going to read from the NIV translation. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 says this, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a... There was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. And the jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be safe? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be safe, you and your household. Verse 32, Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. And our final verse for this morning, verse 34, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. He and his whole household. And this morning, I just want to touch on the topic of a defiant faith. A defiant faith. And I just want to build on last week. Last week, Pastor Yemen talked about defeating the giant. And today, we want to continue on with defiant faith. Defiant faith. Would you pray with me even as we look to the Word of God this morning? Father, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you for the moments that we share around your Word. And Lord, it is in these moments that we see you clearer. It is these moments we catch a glimpse of your desires for each and every one of us. And Holy Spirit, I pray that even as we look to your word, Lord, may you begin to speak to us, may you begin to nudge our hearts so that our faith will be strong, our faith will be defiant. So Lord, we thank you. We commit the rest of this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, in the past couple of months, uh, the big thing that has been going on in our country, in our nation, has been the vaccination, or rather the vaccine rollout. And initially, uh, many individuals were a little bit hesitant uh, to register themselves for the vaccine. You know, uh, we hear of some anti-vaxxers, you know, talking about, you know, going about here and there. Uh, but then when we see a uh, rise in the number of cases of uh, COVID-19, uh, immediately, wow, panic. People started to panic and uh, people started to rush to be vaccinated. I know when the AstraZeneca registration for the AstraZeneca came out the second time, wow, in just a couple of hours, it was fully booked out. And understandably, people wants to be vaccinated 
And I know some of you have already been vaccinated. I've seen it on ins- on the social media. Some of you have taken pictures, you know, with the with the photo frame. You say I have been vaccinated, uh, and I see some people have also you know posted um, their pictures in the in WhatsApp groups and all. And if you have been vaccinated, good on you. Uh, if you are still waiting for your turn, you know. Uh, don't give up, continue to press on, continue to stay, uh, be careful and uh, to be vigilant. And, you know, I understand why people want to be vaccinated because, you know, people are looking forward to some sort of normalcy. You know, people want to return back to what it was before um, COVID-19. You know, people want to go back to their lives as before. Uh, But, you know, church, I was just thinking about it. The reality is that our lives will never go back 100% to what it was before COVID-19. Yes, the vaccine may open certain doors for us. Yes, the vaccine may enable us to travel. Uh, It may enable us to uh, be a little bit more comfortable meeting and gathering outside. Um, But the reality is things will not go back 100% to the same way as it was before. And this is because life has already changed so much. Now, just a quick question. I, I would like all of you to participate, participate with me. And uh, how many of you have made some huge changes in some areas in your life in the past one year or so since COVID-19 happened? How many of you have made some changes in A, in your workplace? How many of you made some changes in B in education? Uh, whether you are a student or you are a teacher, how many of you have made some changes in family, in family life? How many of you have made some changes in D in health? If you can identify with any of this, uh, go ahead and put it in the chat, okay? If you identify that you have made some changes, say for example, you have made some changes in your workplace and in family life, put it in the chat. Uh, your answer A and C, okay? If not, if you have other answer, go ahead and put all the other answer as well, all right? Great. And I I believe that you would at least choose one of these areas. And like it or not, the reality is our lives have changed. We have uh, changed. Things in our lives have changed. Uh, For those of us who are working, our work life has definitely changed. For some of us, uh, we are working from home. For some of you, you are uh, you are having kind of a hybrid situation. One week you're working in the office, one week you're working at home. Uh, for those of you who are in the education line, whether you are a student or you are a teacher, for those of you who are students, uh, I know classes are fully online at this moment, this juncture of time. Uh, for teachers, I know some schools are having a hybrid. They are doing a physical class and at the same time doing a uh, online class as well. Um, for family life, um, I know today we are spending a lot of time um, at home uh, with our loved ones uh, if they are staying with us. And definitely how we gather as a church, that has changed as well. Uh, we are gathering online. We are gathering, f- even for our prayer meetings, we are having Zoom meetings, Zoom prayer meetings. We are having Zoom cell groups. Uh, we are Zooming here, Zooming there. Uh, life in the community. That has changed as well. I, you know, I can't remember when's the last time uh, you, uh, we, or rather we have gathered with our friends uh, as a big group, uh, you know, as a large group. I, I can't remember when's the last time I gathered with my relatives. Uh, it's probably a very, very long time now. And you know, church, uh, we have adapted to all these changes. And some of us, we have pivoted pretty well. And some of us, well, we are still adapting to the changes. And especially for those of you who are in SMEs, in the small, medium enterprises, you are still navigating through the various SOPs that the government comes up with every now and then. And of course, you know, that in itself is another challenge altogether. And perhaps our priorities have changed uh, because our lifestyle has changed in the past one year or so. No, perhaps our values have changed too, uh, one way or another. But as a people of God, 
Yes, you know, the situation may change. Yes, the things around us may change. But can I beseech you this morning? Can I plead with all of us this morning? Let's have a faith that is defiant. Let ha- let's us have a defiant faith. The word defiant means to refuse to back down. The word defiant means to refuse to give up. It means to resist. And a defining faith is a faith that knows how to keep our focus on Jesus. A defining faith is one that refuses to back down even though the circumstances around us may not be so good. And this morning, I plead with all of us, let's have a defined faith. And why is this so important? Because it brings us back to our why. It brings us back to our reason. It brings us back to our focus, which is Jesus. Jesus is the centrality of our life. He is the cornerstone. He is the main message. And you and I, we live for the audience of one. Yes, the things around us may change. Yes, that in the coming days, things will rapidly change. But having a resolve, having a defined faith brings us back to the core of our lives. And you know, in the passage that we have read this morning, we find that Paul and Silas were actually going to a place to pray. And on the way to that place, they encountered a girl who had a spirit of divination, a spirit that is demonic. I know she was a fortune teller. She could predict what is going to happen in the future. And her masters, her owners, were actually using her as a golden goose to bring in money for them. And when she met Paul and Silas, she kept shouting that these men are servants of God. You know, wherever they went, she kept shouting, Everybody! Everybody! Paul and Silas, these men are men of God. Everybody, these men are men of God. And Paul was extremely annoyed by it. And I can understand his annoyance. Because can you imagine with me, uh, here we have a girl with a demonic spirit and that demonic spirit is making claims that Paul and Silas are servants of God. Uh, Well, we may think that it's kind of like a free advertisement for them, but... People who do not know better, they may group the girl and Paul and his gang as coming from the same source. You know, oh, you know, Paul and the girl, you know, they have that same spirit, you know, that sort of thing. And so Paul didn't want to have anything to do with the devil, or rather he did not want to give any credit to the devil. And so he cast that spirit out from the girl. And when the spirit left the girl, she could no longer predict the future. And the owners were fuming mad that their golden goose is no longer functioning. And so they got the authorities to capture Paul and Silas. Uh, They were stripped, they were beaten up severely, and they were thrown into maximum security prison. How do I know they were thrown into maximum security prison? Well, they were thrown into the inner cell, okay? Not just any ordinary cell, they were thrown into the inner cell, and they were and they were put in stocks. Their feet was bounded. Can you imagine? Uh, they already thrown into inner cell. Why need to put their feet in stocks? But you know what? That's what happened to them. And so they were thrown into maximum security prison. And that's where we find ourselves this morning. And perhaps you may be asking a question. What does this have to do with us? It's a little bit strange, right? Uh, well, we may not have cast out a demonic spirit like Paul. Uh, we may not have be- been beaten up physically and thrown into prison. But perhaps having gone through this one year plus of pandemic and being in some sort of a lockdown, it can feel like our lives have taken a beating per se. You know, because of the pandemic, our mental and emotional health have taken a toll. Uh, perhaps physically as well. You know, we don't get to move much as before. You know, some of you who have gotten COVID and are recovering like me, you know, you you may still be experiencing some side effects of it. You know, occasionally for myself, I will still have some shortness of breath. 
And because of all these things that are happening in our lives, perhaps some of you are thinking and feeling this. You know, God, I have been living for you. You know, God, I have been doing your will. God, I have been uh, being a testimony for you in, in my workplace, in my families, in the things that I've done. God, I've been doing your will. God, why is all these things happening to me? Why is this happening to my family? Why is this happening to my businesses, to my studies? What's happening to my life? Paul and Silas, who were doing God's work, they were beaten up nicely and they were thrown into prison. And perhaps this morning, you feel like your life has been beaten up per se and you're stuck in the situation that you are in. And even if you are not feeling beaten up and stuck in a particular situation, you know, this morning, can I encourage all of us and plead with you to have a faith that is defiant and nothing short of that. And I pray that after our time this morning, that we will go from here with our faith strengthened and having that defiant resolve to face the many, many, many challenges that awaits us till we see our Maker face to face. And so number one, what does a defiant faith look like? Number one, a person who has a defiant faith sticks to who God is calling them to be when facing A to Z. A person who has a defined faith stick to who God is calling them to be when facing A to Z and not when facing the AstraZeneca vaccination, okay? No, 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 okay? A defined faith has stickability. It has an undeterred, unhindered desire to be who God is calling us to be. You know, in spite of all the A to Zs in this life, a person who has a defined faith knows who their anchor is and sticks to their calling. Now, what are the A to Zs in this life? Basically, whatever that you can think of that starts with A all the way to the letter Z, you name it, you got it. You know, say for example, the letter A, we have anxiety. Uh, letter B, we have burnout. Letter C, we have challenges or even cancer. Letter D, we have disappointment, uh, discouragement. Uh, if we move on to H, we have hurdles. Uh, going down to letter O, we have opposition. Moving down to S, we have setbacks. Moving to W, we have worries. And all the way to Zach, we have zero income. And church, people who have a defined faith chooses to stick to who God is calling them to be in spite of the A to Zs that they may face. And Paul and Silas had a faith that is defined. They knew who God had called them to be. They knew what God was asking them to do and they stuck to it. In fact, the passage that we have just read, they were going to a place to pray. They were seeking God's will. They were interceding perhaps for things. They were spending time with the Lord. And on the way, they cast out the demonic spirit. Or rather, it was Paul who did so out of his annoyance. And that act actually set the girl free from spiritual oppression. And because of that, they were beaten up badly. They were thrown in prison. And in spite of their circumstances in prison, Paul and Silas still prayed. They worshipped God so loudly that all the other prisoners could hear them. And they didn't stop there. They continued to testify of who God is to the jailer. And the jailer's entire household, not just his family, everyone who was part of his household, and that includes servants too, they ended up believing in Jesus. And that night itself, they were baptized. And all this because Paul and Silas stuck to their calling. 
I don't know about you, but that seemed a pretty defiant kind of faith to me. You know, life will bring all its A to Zs to us. And a lot of times, we don't really get a say to what life brings. At times, we don't have a choice of what happens to us. But church, we can always choose of how we respond to it. We may not have control over our situation. We may not have control over the circumstances that we are in. But we can always choose how we respond to it. We can always choose to have a faith that is defiant. We can always choose to stick to God in spite of what happens around us. You know, I remember when I was about seven, 19, not 17, 19, I had uh, the opportunity to stay on a ship for three months. Uh, it's a Christian ship called Dulos, and uh, it has already stopped uh, operating today. But back in the day, they were going from country to country, you know, selling Christian books, selling Christian literature. And at each port, uh, they would be sending teams out in the local area to do ministry. And so I, was, I had opportunity to stay on the ship for three months and we sailed from Philippines uh, to the Taiwan. And in Taiwan, I had the privilege of going to a Taiwan prison to minister there uh, with the ministry team. And it was such an experience, you know, just seeing the inmates worshipping God. You know, some of them, they were in for major crimes. Some were there and they were approaching death row. And quite a number of them were going to be in there for a very long time. But when it, comes to, when it came to service time and when it came to worshipping uh, God and singing praises to Him, my, you know, they were just singing their hearts out. They were just worshipping God with such passion and with such conviction, with such a defiant faith written all over them. You know, the circumstances may not be too good for them but they continue to put their trust and hope in God because they know they have been redeemed by Jesus. They have been set free for all eternity. And so they chose to stick to God. And perhaps this morning, you know, some of us have given up holding to God you know, because of unanswered prayers, you know, because things didn't turn out the way we want them to, we kind of gave up holding on to Him. And friends, if I can be honest with all of us today, the reality is there will be times we will not understand how God responds. There will be times we may not comprehend His ways. In fact, at times, we can feel like we are at a loss, we can feel downtrodden, and things will feel too heavy for us to bear. But remember, his grace is sufficient for us. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. He is our strength for today and He is our hope for tomorrow. He will enable us to be resilient and He will help us to persevere. So church, don't let go. Don't give up. Stick with Him to the very end. And God didn't create us to go through this life by ourselves. He knows that we can't. And that is why He gave us the Holy Spirit to empower us for this life we have, to be His witnesses. And more than that, He gave us a community of people to journey with us. And so number two, people who have a defiant faith knows how to surround us themselves with kingdom-minded people. People who have a defiant faith knows how to surround themselves with kingdom-minded people, with kingdom mentality people. Paul had Silas, or rather Silas had Paul, whichever way you want to see it. And the Bible didn't record for us their conversations. The Bible didn't record for us their thought processes, their emotions, the things that were going on through their minds as they were being given a nice beating 
and thrown into prison. But the Bible records for us how they responded. They prayed and they worshipped. They prayed and they worshipped. You know, church, in seasons of uncertainty, in seasons of change, we need to learn to surround ourselves with people who are kingdom-minded. We need to learn to surround ourselves with people who will point us back to God. We need to surround ourselves with people who will remind us to abide in Him and to encourage us to worship Him when the storms of life are huge. And last week, you know, Pastor Yiming talked about connecting with people who will stand with us. And I would like to build on that thought. Yes, let us connect with people who are like-minded. Yes, we need people who will stand in solidarity with us. And let us surround ourselves with kingdom-minded, kingdom mentality people. Surrounding ourselves with people who are kingdom-minded adds another level to connecting with people who stand with us. For example, if I'm going through a difficult situation and if I say to myself, oh, no, I am going through such a tough time. Oh, pity me. No, I'm so kalian, you know, so kasian, you know. And I go on pitying myself. And the people around me are like-minded. And they want to stand with me. And so they say, oh, pity you, Jared. Oh, you are so chama, so kalian. You know, church, uh, we're going to have a pity party. And it's not going to do anyone any good in the long run. yes we may find encouragement for a short period of time, but kingdom-minded people are aiming for the long haul. They have eternity in mind. They have a larger than what's happening now kind of perspective. And you and I, we need to learn to surround ourselves with kingdom-minded people. Because like it or not, at times, we can be very self-absorbed and very self-centered. I know I can be that. You know, at times, our view of life can be too narrow and we can be too focused on what's happening to me, myself, and I. As most of you know, I had COVID some time back and I was sent to the quarantine center. And you know, all of you, you were very supportive. You know, you texted me, you asked how am I doing. Uh, you even texted my wife, you asked, you check on her and you also check on the family. And I really appreciate the support and care uh, that was given uh, by the church. And a couple of friends, you know, jokingly asked me, hey, you know, Jared, how many people have you got safe already huh? since you are stuck in the quarantine center? How many people have you shared the gospel with? And I knew that they were asking in jest. You know, they were trying to make things a little bit lighthearted in view of the situation. You know, but I was feeling quite annoyed, you know. You know, what wow. I waited about seven hours before I finally had a bed. And I was tired, I was exhausted, you know, I was hungry because I didn't have lunch. You know, I, I was just trying to wrap my mind around a lot of anxious thoughts and dealing with all those things. And also the questions uh, which was asked uh, jokingly, it got on my nerve. Uh, But anyway, I just struck it off uh, in annoyance and and went to bed. And the next day, when I got up, um, the Holy Spirit nudged me gently. And the Holy Spirit asked me, Hey, didn't you always want the opportunity to make friends with unchurched people? Well, this is it. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, really? And so you can see how the Holy Spirit works through kingdom-minded people. Now, even through a question that is, you know, sort of a jest. And I'm very grateful and thankful for my kingdom-minded friends. Because of them, I am reminded, I was reminded of why I'm here on earth, even though I was not in a mood to hear them. And one of my close friends actually said this to me. Hey, you know, you are not stuck with 800 people. 800 people are stuck with you. You know, talk about kingdom-minded perspective, kingdom perspective, this is it. And now, you know, being out of the quarantine center, 
I'm actually still keeping in touch with a group of guys that I've met. In fact, we have a WhatsApp group and you know, we kind of text each other every now and then and all. And church, I don't know about you, uh, you know, perhaps you are better than me. But I know that I need to surround myself with kingdom-minded, kingdom mentality, kingdom perspective friends. Because life is tough. Life is not smooth sailing. Life has its hills, it has its valleys. And it's very easy to lose focus on the main prize, on the main goal. And journeying together helps us to have a faith that is defined. It helps us to have a faith that tahan lasa. And finally, last but not least, people who have a defined faith knows how to surrender it all to God. People who have a defined faith knows how to surrender it all to God. You know, when we look at the passage that we read this morning, we find Paul and Silas responding in an unseemly manner. You know, they were beaten up badly. They were thrown into what was their maximum security prison at the time. And yet, they prayed and worshipped God. They prayed and worshipped God. If we can be honest this morning, you know, we usually think that prayer means we are asking God to do something for us. But more often than not, what prayer does is that it actually reveals who we are on the inside and prayer does something in us. And when we realize who we are not, we can't help but worship God because He loves us and to surrender our lives, our entire being to Him. And perhaps when Paul and Silas were in their prison cells, when they were all locked up and bound in their feet, I wonder if that was the case for them. That when they prayed, for more, the more they were in awe of God. That the more they were in awe of God, the more they worship Him. And the more they worship Him at the top of their lungs, the more they surrender their lives to Him. And church, because if it is, then you and I, we can have hope. Because if it is, it means you and I, we can also learn to surrender our all to Him. Because when we realize who God is, when we realize that He is our everlasting Father, that He is the Prince of Peace, that He is the wonderful Counselor, He is the Mighty God, that He is Emmanuel, God with us, we can surrender our all to Him. And you know, perhaps some of you this morning, even as we are come to a close today, maybe you're saying and thinking this, hey, you know, pastor, yes, defiant faith, you know, sounds very good. You know, sounds like a good deal. But I'm not a kind of person. I'm not a, a very driven person. I'm not outgoing in that manner. I'm not a goal setter and I'm not one who can do this kind of things. Well, church, having a defiant faith has nothing to do with our personality. It has nothing to do with our character but having a defiant faith is something that we choose each and every single day. It is a choice that we make when we get up in the morning. It is choosing to stick to who God is calling us to be. It is choosing to surround ourselves with kingdom-minded people. It is choosing to surrender our all to God. And you and I, we can make that choice each and every single day. And so tomorrow, when you wake up, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to make that choice 
to have a divine faith.